What uh, Progress for Science has done in an extraordinary way, and I have to say, I think even the founders of Progress for Science might be a little shocked about this. The progress that has occurred in a relatively short amount of time has been tremendous. A lot of people have seen the video of the 11 of us being confronted by the vivisectors and uh, these other people that they, that they gathered. You can look historically at other groups that have come under protest and they start screaming back. That means it's working. When they criticize certain methods of pursuing freedom of speech, they're criticizing the ones that are the most effective. Every movement in this country that has initiated widespread social change has had people out in the streets. Freedom of speech entails action. If we're not able to hold the individual person that makes up the institution accountable for what they do, accountable for animal abuse, accountable for not being transparent with the public about what they're doing and how they're using tax money, there's no way of penetrating those institutional walls. There are very, very strong forces that are trying to silence us and suppress our rights, but we have to know our rights. We actually live in a place that, for the most part, gives us a platform to protest. We have to use our voices. That's a gift. Not every other country has that. We don't have the money. We don't have the power that the vivisectors have, but we have our voices. The pictures and the documentation that we have of what these vivisectors are doing are truthful. And if the truth is that ugly and you don't want your neighbors to know about it, then maybe you should be living another truth. The only way they have to silence our collective voice is to bring baseless charges against individual activists, which is what they've done in this case. They selectively picked three individuals who were at a protest with many more than three people and sought a restraining order against them, only later to drop the charges. The stronger an activist is, the more you're going to keep an eye on them because they have things to say about you in a way that compels an audience. There's nothing that has been done by Progress for Science that has jeopardized the safety of any of these people. Not one thing. It's a waste of the court's time, and they know that it's a waste of our campaign's money. So we're gonna fight to get that money back. Unfortunately, it takes money to do that. It would be so helpful if you were able to donate $10 or any amount that you can. It's costing literally thousands of dollars in legal fees for something that none of us did wrong. We were simply just using our First Amendment rights. If we sweep this away, that signals to vivisectors and to UCLA that we don't realize the power that we have to exercise our First Amendment rights and to defend those rights. If we win this case, and we expect that we will, the money will go back to Progress for Science and continue to be used to fight experimentation on monkeys at UCLA and in other UC schools. Every single bit of money will go back into um, fighting for the animals. It will certainly begin with um, sending a signal to UCLA that they can't use the legal system to silence us. UCLA and the people at UCLA who are experimenting on these animals have silenced these animals. They've taken away their ability to speak up for themselves and they've taken away their ability to fight back for their own freedom. And all these animals have are few individuals who are willing to give up our time to raise our voices, to step outside into the public square and to educate others about what's happening to them. If we are the most privileged in this equation and we are silenced, then the animals who are being exploited have absolutely no hope. Each one of those animals is an individual that is suffering needlessly in the campaign that Progress for Science has been fighting. I think it is something that is winnable. You should give because we are having an effect.